Yeah, so hello and welcome back. Uh, it's Will here and we're going to try something a bit different. Um, we're going to be looking at some classics themed music, potentially, and seeing what we think of them. I'm going to be trying to rate them both out of how good the song is and also how accurate it is. This could be terrible. Let's find out. So that, that was Iron Maiden's Alexander the Great. On the one hand, classic band with just doing the, the peak 80s stuff. And I love that they've tried to do an entirely biographical song about Alexander the Great. Like, very high scoring already. But I, I have notes. I have lots of notes. We've got to talk about the line, he paved the way for Christianity. What does that mean? <laughs> what? 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 In what way? Like, Christianity isn't around for 300 more years. What? There are bits of his empire that won't be Christian for like another 500, 600 years after that. I... What, what does that line mean, Iron Maiden? What does it mean? A aside from that, pretty good. I mean, we've got the lines of... Uh, we we've got the Battle of Galgamela, which they call Arbella here, but that's, that's fine. It's just another name for it. We've got the story of the Gordian Knot. That's, that's quite fun. I like that. We've got lines from his dad, Philip II. Um... There's a line early on where it says that Macedonia is part of Greece, which is um, tricky waters. Alexander would have said Macedonia was part of Greece, and his dad would have as well. Uh, and in, in modern days, Greece claims that Macedonia is part of Greece. But Macedonians would claim that Macedonia is actually part of Macedonia and it's entirely separate to Greece. And actually, ancient Greeks considered Macedonia pretty separate as well. They had a very different culture, a linked but different culture. Ironically, the Macedonians were probably more Homeric Greek, more, more like the heroes of the Odyssey and the Iliad than actual Greeks ever were. But they just w were seen as sort of savages by, by regular Greeks. It, it, it's, it's fine. Alexander, you know what? Alexander would have liked the line, so you get points for it. That's fine. Um, something I, I have more issues with is the timeline here is all sorts of messed up. Like, the Gordian Knot should be basically the first paragraph here. That's the first thing that happens chronologically here. The, the Scythians, like, yes, he fought them at Jaxata, but not until after uh, he'd conquered Egypt. So that's backwards as well. The timeline is a bit messed up, but it's a song. I, we've got to give it some leeway. Um, I like the bit about his army marching line by line, because famously they did. They, um, his army was made of um, Sarissa bearers, which is like a very long spear with sort of a curved end. And... They had a little shield on their arm, and they're a bit like a phalanx, but slightly longer spears, slightly better trained. The idea was that they would be the anvil, and the cavalry would come round, and they would be the hammer to hammer the enemy onto the anvil. So you're trapped between rows and rows of these deadly spears that are all moving as one, and the, the horsemen who would come around the sides and just sort of demolish you. <laughs> um, so yeah, I really like that. The bit about him, um, his army not listening to him in India, I mean, yeah, that happened. I think th this is this is pretty well. They do have a great effort. I really love it. But there's just a couple of problems in there. So sort of eight. We'll give it an eight. We'll give it an eight. They they did pretty well. I'm happy with that. Eight out of ten. Good job, Iron Maiden. Songs are all linked down below in the description somewhere. So uh, check them out and see if you agree with me. Achilles, 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 come down. Won't you get up off, get up off the roof? So this one was recommended by one of my students as something that they revised to, which I can I can definitely see. It's quite I like it. It's it's very lo-fi and chill. I'm a sucker for violins, so that helps. Uh, in terms of classics, like it's it's about Achilles. In in quite a way that I can definitely see this being something Patroclus sings to Achilles, like Achilles, just chill. I know you like glory and fighting and everything, just chill. It's very into those vibes. I I do appreciate that, but I, I have two issues. One, uh, why are we talking about Rome? Rome wasn't around when Achilles was around. But more importantly, telling someone to get off the roof. This is definitely a song about Elpenor. Anyone who's read the Odyssey will know Elpenor is the one who needs to get off the roof because otherwise he's going to fall off it and die. So, <laughs> um, shout out to anyone who studied the Odyssey at GCSE, I guess. You know who you are. Um, yeah, I mean, like, 7 out of 10. It's got Achilles vibes, but it, this is definitely about Elpenor, not Achilles. I'm sorry. This is your daily reminder to like, comment, and subscribe. Not just on me, but on, but on anyone, any YouTuber you like, really. Great clouds all over the hills, bringing darkness from above. But if you close your eyes, does it Okay, a song I actually know. Hooray! <laughs>
Uh, Pompeii by Bastille is, of course, about the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, which buried Pompeii and Herculaneum um, in huge amounts of ash, volcanic ash. Uh, when they're saying, and the clouds roll over the hills, they're talking about pyroclastic flow here, which is like huge clouds of really fast moving volcanic ash that just clogs everything. Um, we know that ash fell from above, um, as well as large rocks. Uh, there's a famous skeleton in Pompeii where um, it looks like he's been battered like a wily coyote with a huge rock just destroying him. Um, we know that the person probably died before they got hit by the rock, but still, it's, um, it's pretty cataclysmic. If this happens, you basically know you're dead. Uh, there's a mini tsunami, there's earthquakes, there's ash, there's rocks. And we know most of this because of a first-hand account by Pliny the Younger, whose uncle went in to try, uncle Pliny the Elder, went in to try and save people and ended up succumbing to the ash. One of those moments in history that can be very, very personal because we've got that personal account of it. But equally, it's really, really, really useful for archaeologists because we've got two whole buried cities we can just excavate. Uh, but the sort of sense of doom and gloom you get here of, and that sort of hopelessness of just close your eyes and pretend you're somewhere else, I think embodies probably pretty well what people were feeling. But of course, the reason why this is getting a 10 out of 10 is because it has Latin in it, and so few songs have Latin in that aren't really heavy metal songs. Eh, eh, you, eh. Uh, that, that eh, you is a classical Latin um, lament. It's a way of grieving, which presumably would be going around quite a lot as Vesuvius erupted and buried several towns. Um, but yeah, 10 out of 10 for Bastille. Good job. Good job, lads. This is what you get for British artists. Yeah, if, if there are any songs that you think would make a for good for good viewing, uh, especially any terrible ones, I love terrible history. <laughs> then uh, let me know, and and I might do another one of these. All right, I didn't hate it. It was fine. Um, the song itself, there's a couple of moments of. of talking about what might have been at Circus Maximus. There's front row seats. Uh, I feel like this is mostly analogy for modern culture that I don't understand. So I'm gonna say like, in terms of classics content, three out of 10 and just move on. Cause I, I don't wanna delve into this. I don't know what this is about. But it, I mean, it mentioned Socrates. That's that's something. I, I It also mentioned McDonald's, which they definitely didn't have. Uh, they did have fast food. There's in, in Pompeii, there's like, um. Uh, a place you can go and you can pull up in your chariot to get a snack and keep moving, which is sort of like fast food. So I guess, I don't know, I, I'm, yeah, three out of 10. We'll stick with that because this isn't really about classics. It's just a name and we'll move on. Something a bit more recent, if not in release to the song in terms of the history. Um, so, <laughs> Uh, this is about the arrival of the great heathen army. Uh, so the Vikings have been around for a while at this point, um, but the, the great heathen army was really their, maybe not their first, but like, it, it was their big attempt to conquer Britain and, and create a new settlement, a new Viking settlement where they're in charge. And they're, they're very successful at this. So when we're talking about uh, Norsemen swimming ashore and the Eastern coast belongs to us no more, we're talking about the fall of East Anglia, of, of Norfolk and Suffolk, led at the time, but I know I know. Um, led at the time by Edmund, uh, who becomes Edmund the Martyr, and is actually one of England's most popular saints for a very long time, uh, pretty much until uh, Thomas Becket takes over as, as everyone's favourite saint. Um, but he was killed by the sons of Ragnar, including Ivar the Boneless. These are real people. Um, the, the sons of Ragnar led the great heathen army, Ivar the Boneless. And they, they were, as I say, they were incredibly successful. These lines about kingdom after kingdom falling this is exactly what happens. So before the Vikings come, we have something that's often called the Heptarchy, the Seven Kingdoms. They do start falling. And this is one of the problems that England has, is that it's not united. They can't put this big united front against the Vikings. At the same time, though, it's an advantage. Because while the Vikings are wasting time fighting East Anglia and then Mercia and, and Sussex and Middlesex, um, Wessex has time to prepare and get their act together. And this it does. Um, Alfred is, is the main turning point in this. He's the one who sort of really, after some initial setbacks, really gets things together. His dad, Ethelwolf, had also been pretty successful. Um, 
as is his brother, but Alfred's the one where really the turning point happens, and then he's able to lead that revival of British culture. And this is what this is why he's known as one of the greatest English kings ever, even if he wasn't the king of all England. Um, I suppose we should be the greatest Saxon kings ever. Um, I like this. This is great. Uh, the only real historical faults in this are in the fact that they didn't conquer everything. As I say, Wessex was a holdout. Um, and also that the music video is madness. Um, as, as we might expect from the darkness, they, they really go over the top. It does perpetuate the myth that Vikings wore horns on their helmets, but, you know, the, the, one of them had a toilet on their helmet. I don't think we can hold that against them. Uh, so... I don't know, like a, a seven. It's a pretty good song. It's not as informative as Alexander or Pompeii, but it's it's still pretty solid. It's got real names in there, real history, and it's it's just a great song. Uh, we, we need more terrible ones. We need if we do this again, I'm gonna put a couple of of real garbage in there, some real just trash, awful history because that's more fun. I really like the Titus one. I think that might be just as a song my favourite because it's so it's so silly. It was my favourite song. So, I, I don't know, the Alexander was pretty good. I like the It was too yeah. long. I was yeah, like, eight, eight, minutes is, <laughs> eight minutes is too much. It's too much. I mean it, Barbarians also got better names, right? I've rather boneless. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Skin man. Skin man. Ooh, skin man. <laughs> villain in disguise. Well he's not in disguise, he's no. just a villain. He's just going around conquering East Anglia. Does that make the other guy a skeleton man? I mean, he is dead. <laughs> I mean, that pretty effectively makes you a skeleton. 